what's up guys today I wanted to do a video and talk about shutter speed as it relates to sports photography the school year just started a couple of weeks ago and I have been getting a lot of questions from people asking my thoughts about shutter speed especially as it relates to low light sports photography things like football games on a Friday night night soccer games basketball wrestling volleyball all of the low light indoor or nighttime kind of games and whenever I think about photographing some sporting events like that, I look at it as a battle between shutter speed and ISO. On one hand, you've got shutter speed, and if you slow your shutter speed down too much, you're gonna get motion blur in your images, and it's gonna result in an image that isn't tack sharp. On the flip side of that, if you raise your ISO up to get a faster shutter speed, you're gonna run into issues as well. Whenever you raise your ISO up, you're going to have problems with noise. Now, a lot of people, when you mention noise, they automatically think of grain in images. And I'll be honest, I think photographers make way too big of a deal about grain in images. Especially something like sports photography, I don't think it's a huge deal and it's very easily corrected in post-processing. What is a bigger deal about the high ISO ranges in your cameras is you're going to begin to lose fine details. And whenever you're losing those fine details, you're losing sharpness in your image. And then when you add noise reduction on top of that, you're going to lose more sharpness. And the other issue is, is as you start getting into really high ISOs, you're going to have problems with color replication, color accuracy, and it, it's just going to look bad. So you've got the trade-off between a slow shutter speed and losing sharpness because of motion blur or losing sharpness because the ISO is too high. So it becomes a balancing act. Now, I can't give you any hard and fast rules that say, you have to shoot or you should shoot at this ISO because every camera body is different. I also can't give you any hard and fast rules on what shutter speed to use because every sport is different and also the talent level of what you're photographing can vary. For example, if I'm photographing a basketball team, a junior varsity basketball team at a small school, the action's probably not going to be very fast paced. The athletes probably, I don't want to say aren't going to be very good, but the ball's not going to move as fast and you know, things like that, as opposed to if I'm photographing, let's say, a Division I varsity basketball team that's going to compete for a state championship, the ball's going to move fast, the players are going to move fast, so I'm going to have to use a faster shutter speed for that. So there is there is some variance in there, and I really don't like to give numbers, uh, even though I am going to do it. I don't like to because what I don't want to see you do is I don't want to see you get boxed into, well, you know, I saw this guy on YouTube and this is what he said. I'll give you an example. I was out shooting last year at a basketball game, and to make a long story short, this woman couldn't figure out why she wasn't getting sharp images, and she told me she had seen my work, she liked it, and long story short, she was shooting in an ISO of 1600 and a shutter speed of 1 160th of a second trying to photograph basketball. And when I told her she needed to raise her shutter speed, you know, and to do that she was going to have to raise her ISO, she was adamant she couldn't do that. She said she couldn't shoot above ISO 1600 because that would ruin the images. And what it turned out was she had taken a photography class. I don't know if it was online or in person or what, but the instructor said, don't ever shoot above ISO 1600, or at least that's what she took it as he said. And so as a result, she had this in her mind. She couldn't shoot faster than ISO 1600. And she was getting bad images because she was afraid that going above that was going to ruin her images. So when you hear people throw numbers around, don't get locked into them. There's always room for variance and there's always exceptions to the rules. So if you watch like a B&H presentation or a workshop by one of the big name sports photographers, the guys that shoot for Sports Illustrated, Olympic photographers, MLB photographers, those kind of guys, most of them will say that one one thousandth of a second is a good starting point for shooting sports. And that is true. It is a good starting point. But that is not the reality of photographing high school level sports at night. You probably will never be able to get a one one thousandth of a second shutter speed unless you're willing to push your ISO up into ridiculously high numbers. The thing is, is those professional level photographers, those top guys, they're shooting at events that are lit for television. And basically, whenever NBC or ESPN is going to televise a game, you know, they want to make sure that it looks good on TV. So there is a ton of light at these events. So those guys are able to shoot with relatively low ISOs and fast shutter speeds because there is so much lighting. At high school venues, you are very, you're, you're really just going to be battling the light all night because I've never been to a high school event that took place at night or indoors where I was able to achieve a one one thousandth of a second shutter speed 
at any kind of reasonable ISO. As a general rule of thumb, when I shoot sports, I used to say 1 400th of a second was kind of the low end of where I wanted to be. And I was looking through some old images the other day and I actually would say it's about 1 500th of a second is the low end of where I, not that I want to be, but where I will shoot at. Anything below that, you just really tend to get too much motion blur in your images. But the reality is, is a lot of high schools, whenever you're talking, especially like smaller schools or older schools, you'll be at six, ISO 6400 and you'll only be getting like 1 320th or 1 400th of a second shutter speed. Now your newer schools and your larger schools, they tend to have a little bit better lighting and you know you can get up to like 1 640th, maybe even 1 800th of a second shutter speed at you know an ISO of 6400. And I'll be honest with you, when I photograph uh, high school level sports, most of the time I'm in the ISO 4000 to ISO 6400 range. And even though sometimes I might be able to drop it down to like, let's say an ISO of 3200, I typically want to err on the side of shutter speed rather than on keeping my ISO low. So I will typically do whatever I can you know, within reason to try to get up to about a 640th of a second shutter speed. That's really kind of the area that I like to be in or I would prefer to be in. Obviously it's much better than one 500th of a second, but usually if I can get up to about 640th of a second, that's whenever I will kind of start bringing my ISO back down in most situations. Now, on the flip side of that, there are some photographers who have a different take on this than what I do. When I photograph a sport, my main objective is to get those really awesome action shots. I want that diving catch, I want the hard tackle, I want the slam dunk, whatever the case may be. I want the fast moving action shots and so, I want to make sure that I have a fast enough shutter speed that when that action happens, which doesn't happen all that often in a game, but when the super exciting play happens that I'm able to get that shot and that it's sharp. On the flip side of that, I know that there are other photographers who do it a little bit differently. I was talking to a gentleman the other day and he tends to shoot a lot of his sports images in the uh, shutter speed of 1 200th of a second range. And his thought process on it is, is that he's able to keep his ISO fairly low and get really clean images. He, th he feels that because most of the action in a sporting event is relatively slow moving, that he wants to get those slow moving action shots and have them be as clean as possible and he's not really worried as much about getting the very dramatic and exciting plays. It's a different thought process, but when you, when you think about it, a lot of the action in a game is fairly static. Uh, for example, in a football game, the quarterback's standing in the pocket. He's not running around or anything. He's standing there looking for a receiver. The linebacker slowly dropping back into coverage, looking to see is it going to be a run play or a pass play, or the point guard, you know, dribbling the ball up the court slowly, calling out a play. You know, those kinds of moments in a game, there's a lot of those, and it's pretty much in any sport that you see those kind of slow-moving uh, you know, the majority of the, of the event is relatively slow moving and his thought process is he wants to get those shots and he wants them to be very clean and he doesn't worry about the rest. It is a completely different way of thinking than what I do. I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm not saying I'm right. It's just different. I, this is something I talked about in my wrestling video whenever I talked about how to photograph wrestling. A lot of wrestling photographers will slow their shutter speed way down and drop their ISO because a lot of the action in a wrestling match is on the mat with the players not or with the wrestlers not moving very much. And I personally have tried that, but I don't like it because inevitably I drop my ISO, my shutter speed down, the wrestlers will scramble and there'll be a really good takedown and I'll miss the shot because it'll just be a big blur. So you just have to decide what kind of shots do you want? Do you want really clean? I don't want to say boring shots, but really clean shots that are not as that are more static, or do you want the highly dynamic, exciting plays? It's it's a trade-off. You can you know you could try to get both, but you're going to be fumbling with your settings a lot, and you're probably going to end up missing a lot of shots. So if you've bought your camera in the last three to four years, you're probably going to be fine to shoot anywhere from ISO 3200 to ISO 6400 without much of a problem. Yes, some of these camera bodies are going to give you a lot of noise as you get up around the 6400 range but you can clean it up in post-processing. One of the cameras that I use or used to use a lot, I don't use it as much anymore, is the old Canon 7D. And I've shot it at ISO 6400 before at football games. And yes, the images were very noisy, 
but it depends on what are you going to use those images for. For me at the time, the 7D worked. I wasn't selling a lot of prints, and the prints I was selling were relatively small, and my, most of my images were going online. If you're just going to post online, you really don't need to overthink this. You can probably get away with using high ISOs and, and relatively fast shutter speeds without a problem. For example, I was shooting at a game two weeks ago. Uh, my son was playing and my buddy, who's a pretty serious hobbyist photographer, he's shooting on a 1DX camera body, so that tells you he's really serious into photography, but he doesn't sell his prints. He doesn't do any of that kind of stuff. His son was the quarterback in the game. And, you know, I was talking to him. He was shooting at one one thousandth of a second shutter speed, and he had a reason for that. I'll get to that in a second. But I asked him, well, what is your ISO at? And he said he had it set to auto ISO, and it was going between 16,000 and 25,000 to give him the one one thousandth of a second shutter speed. Now, you would, now, I know that a 1DX is a pretty good camera for handling high ISO, but to be honest with you, ISO 25,000 is really high, even for the 1DX. But when he posted his images on Facebook, they actually looked just fine. They actually looked really good. And that was all he wanted the images for were for Facebook and Instagram. He wasn't going to print them. He wasn't going to sell them or anything like that. Now, the reason why he wanted the one one thousandth of a second shutter speed is because his son is the quarterback and he wanted to get a good picture of his son throwing the ball. And if you've ever tried to photograph a quarterback when he throws the ball, if you're shooting at one five hundredth of a second, even one six fortieth of a second shutter speed, you're going to get a lot of motion blur, blur in the quarterback's arm when he throws the ball. It is a very fast motion. Same thing with like soccer players or kickers in football. Their leg moves incredibly fast when they go for a hard kick and one five hundredth, one six fortieth of a second is really not going to stop that motion. You're going to get a lot of blur in it. So he was willing to push his ISO up really high to freeze that motion and get a sharp image. And because he was only using it for Facebook and Instagram, it looked just fine. Honestly, I would have never thought that he shot those images at an ISO of 25,000. They look great. Now for me, on the other hand, I've gotten really picky about my images because I have had a lot of requests the last few months for people who bought my sports images and they've made them into posters and they're putting them on like banners and things like that. And when you begin to make these images large, the image, if it's not tack sharp, it will begin to exhibit issues the bigger you make it. And I've had some of my images that people have bought that I've been disappointed because I didn't think they looked as good as they should have in larger prints. Now, on the kind of the irony of it is I didn't like the images. I thought they looked horrible, but every single time the customer didn't even really notice that there was any hint of softness or anything wrong with the image. They loved them. They were happy with them. I actually even had one person come back who I had actually offered a refund to because I thought that there was a little bit, the image was too soft in the large print. And they actually came back and bought a larger print using the same image for her husband's office. So sometimes I think as photographers, maybe we're a little too hard on ourselves about the sharpness in our images. But my point is, is you've really got to stop and think, okay, what am I shooting for? Are you shooting for, let's say, a high school yearbook where the picture is going to probably be that big? You know, it's, it's not a big deal to use a high ISO. If you're shooting for social media, it's really not going to be a huge deal. You know, if you're going to upload high-res images to Flickr and try to get people to like them, yeah, maybe it is going to be, you know, maybe it is a little bit more important. So, you know, you just really have to balance what are you shooting for and what do you need. In my buddy's case, he wanted a very high shutter speed to freeze the motion of his son's arm. That was all he wanted was a good picture of his son throwing the ball. And he got it. You know, whereas me, I'm more centered around selling prints and hopefully large prints to make money and so I'm extremely picky. Now there is one other thing that you can do, you can use flash and this weekend I'm gonna to put together a video. I've been using flash to shoot football pretty much exclusively the last few weeks and I'm gonna talk about the things I've learned of what worked and what hasn't worked but that's a whole separate video. One other thing I do wanna talk about is not just whenever it's low light but on heavily overcast days or later in the afternoon kind of games don't be afraid to push your ISO up to give you a fast shutter speed. I was shooting at a game the other day and I was at, I don't remember what it was, I think I was at like ISO 400 to give me a shutter speed of 1 1600th of a second. And 
another photographer was shooting it. I think it was like ISO 100 and uh, I forget what it was, 1 640th of a second. I, I don't remember the exact settings, but anyways, he, he asked me why I was using such a high ISO. He's like, why don't you drop it down to 100 or 200 and, you know, get cleaner images. And I told them the same, basically the same thing I'm telling you guys. I would ra rather err on the side of having too fast of a shutter speed, especially at that low of an ISO. I was shooting on a full frame Canon 5D Mark III and up to ISO 800, honestly, the noise in there is so minimal. I mean, it really is. It really is inconsequential in my opinion and just the slightest amount of, of noise reduction in Lightroom takes care of it and so up to like ISO 800 I have no problem shooting up there to give me a fast shutter speed you know one one thousandth of a second is kind of a good starting point for shooting sports but I'll be honest with you I like being faster than that if I can because it if there is something that happens a super fast you know action in the game I want to make sure I freeze it and there's really, in my opinion, there's no trade-off for me shooting at ISO 400 or 800 to give me a 1200 or 1600 shutter speed. And I know that a lot of photographers disagree with me because I talk to a lot of different people at different games I go to, you know, and a lot of people want to be at ISO 100 and they're willing to make that trade-off because in their, and I'm not saying anybody's wrong, I'm not trying to call anybody out or anything like that, but I... I would just prefer to have more shutter speed, especially at those lower ISOs. It just really doesn't matter to me. It really doesn't. And I see so many photographers just constantly trying to stay at ISO 100. And in my opinion, they're running the risk of getting motion blur in there. So like I say, I always err on the side of shutter speed over ISO. And then it, there is a balancing act that comes in once you start reaching a certain point and that balance that, that point is going to depend on your camera body and what it's capable of but if it's a modern camera you're probably going to be able to get up to like 3200 before noise really becomes any kind of issue and then you know 6400 for most cameras is probably the top range of where you want to shoot unless you have something that's come out in the last 18 months or so then you might be able to push it higher than that so I hope that helps you guys out. If you guys have any questions about sports photography or anything else, by all means, uh, go ahead and feel free to ask me. I am truly flattered. Some of you guys have actually tracked down my horribly designed website and emailed me and stuff like that. I'm really flattered that you guys think that highly of me to ask me questions. I do try to respond to all of those questions. Sometimes it does take me a couple of days because I am a full-time photographer and I guess you could say a part-time YouTuber as opposed to doing this full time. So I, I do try to get back to everybody's questions and by all means, if you guys have them, don't hesitate to ask me on Facebook or Instagram or anything like that. Just, you know, I apologize if it does take me a day or two to get back to you guys. So thanks for watching guys. Have a great day.